Welcome gamers to episode 2 of this Let's Play series of Gal Civ 4. This is the Supernova edition or version of the game. Uh, my name is Jazz Tacky, welcome to the channel and also a special thank you to Stardock, the developers of Gal Civ, who are sponsoring this series. And um, if you do want to actually grab the game, there's a link, it should be about now, in the top corner uh, of the screen uh, where you can actually then go and grab the game for yourselves. So if you are concerned about my objectivity, Yes, it is sponsored, but I'm under no instruction to say anything other than, you know, like basically just to play the game. So, uh, and I'm really genuinely, I uh, love what they've done with this version of the game. This is by far, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, in my uh, objective opinion, that this is the best Gal Civ uh, by a mile, by an absolute mile. It's already really, really cool. And there's a couple of other changes coming. This is version 1.8 that I'm playing right now uh, of the early access. 1.9 is literally a day or two away, so I'll be switching this one over to 1.9 as soon as that one does become available. And then well, there'll be a whole lot of other changes. I've already seen some of the changes that are coming for that one. Uh, looks very, very exciting. And then a couple of weeks after that, a few weeks after that, we've then got the actual launch of the game. So maybe three or four weeks after that. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll be playing this one up. Maybe I'll try to leave it with a little bit of a gap between the end of this one and then the start of the actual of when the game actually does release because um, I'm really looking forward to this one. This is um, Stardock have done an incredible job of just balancing all sorts of different um, different bits and pieces around this particular uh, version of the game. Anyway, let's get into it. Uh, we are playing as the Elysian Vanguard, uh, which is a, 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 uh, a faction that we created ourselves and we're here at Aurora Prime, is our main planet, the one just in through there, our core world which is a paradise world. And we're sort of just still slowly sort of building things up. We're building another manufacturing district at the moment, but I'm not going to be rushing things too much. Our money situation is reasonable at this point in time. Um, I'm going to try to save that now until we sort of have a need for it. Uh, we've gone through in the last episode about, you know, the, getting started with our first turn and so on and so forth. There are a few turns in at this point in time. Right, what else should we do? Um, it says we should consider co uh, colonizing Mapingo 3, which is, that's Mapingo in through there. Now 3 is there. If we can reach it, I don't think we can. No, we can't reach it. We'll get there though, we will get there. So we're sort of slowly bringing our forces out to um, to uh, try to get there. There may be a, a, a planet we can colonize in here, which will then boost our borders out, or we may get something else that will then boost our borders out for us as well. Now, a very quick summary of who we are. Think in terms of we've got cheap leaders. Um, they're uh, essentially inspired and loyal are the, are the aspects we went with, which means that our, our leaders are cheaper and better than they normally would be. So I'm sort of wanting to play more of a samurai type sort of style game where we rely heavily on leadership. Uh, let's see. Let's just see how we sort of go with this one. You know, we're honor and things like that. Was sort of what we're going to be probably sort of. Uh, but combat, combat oriented, is the uh, is the vision that I have for the actual game itself. Now we've got like a lot of ones. I'm just trying to get across to either get this one or to come back up into here. We just need to stretch this out just slightly. We're so so close. Um, I don't have a, a. I don't have a. Which one is it? I think it's diligence, or is it? No, it's not diligence. It's. It is diligence. So if we have a look, we've got a diligence nine there. Our ministers, our exploration, we're getting a plus eight ship range with diligence eight. We've got an eight there. So we do actually have a better character in here, diligence nine. He would be better in this, in this role. Okay, so he's incurred high amounts of gambling debt. Very, very loyal. The, the loyalty is also is increased with the uh, start that we've actually got, playing with with who we're actually sort of playing as, and plus three control as well. Look, I think I'll uh, he is draconian. Um, sounds good. <laughs> you're in. You're in. What will that then do for our uh, for our limits? Let's just go and move you out of there and move our high guy in. Hercus Mator will sort of now take this particular location in here. Um, yep, so that's going to be okay. Now that's, um, yep, we get the plus 10 loyalty from everyone. Everyone's got the plus 10. Uh, we have the same ideology. So we've got plus 10 in through there, another plus 10 as well. So that then gives us plus 9. This may be enough. This may be enough. Let's just click on done. 
Uh, yes, it is. It is. So we can now get Edisich 2. So we're sort of tweaking the, uh, the tweaking the aspects of the game to sort of make the most of it. In that case, we can just keep this one now coming straight out to then take a hidden planet that we know is uh, very, very cool. We've got a, um, it's, it is number six actually, Mapingo 6, which is a class 35 amazing paradise world. So we definitely want to go, grab that one with this particular ship. So we'll move that one out. Now I could rush my next ship, but you can see I, you know, I'm using up the money uh, quite effectively with leaders, which is exactly the way we should be playing this particular game. And this one now can actually reach this particular world. So we'll move that one across. Uh, I no longer really need this one to go this way, but I still will do it and just have a bit of a look to see if there's any planets. We've got Curry, which requires extreme colonization. This is an excellent world, class 16. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll, extreme colonization, we've got a lot of planets around that have actually got extreme colonization. At this point, I'll just sort of zoom in so we've got our actual ships and um, we will set this one up to auto explore or survey now. We'll just tell it to go off and survey what it can find. I still am thinking like, you know, do I need to still focus on colony ships or not? So let's just move across and see what we can find at this particular system over here. Then we'll, then we'll divert it back across to look at these systems that we sort of have close by to our, to our home world. Uh, we are building another colony ship as well. It's still five turns away. I'm not going to rush the colony ship at this point in time. Okay, Universal Translator, we've now got this one. Now, the next one, this one leaves the hyperwave radio. When that one becomes available, I will grab it, so I can then go and throw one of my uh, other leaders back in charge of some of the special ships. So choose new tech. And we don't actually have it in here, but we do actually have colonial policies, which we can get very, very quickly. This unlocks the civilian screen and allows us to assign policies. This is important for us. I'm interested to see also if they have actually introduced... One of the problems I had with it was you couldn't actually access what your what your civilization was all about in the game until you got deep into the, the diplomacy. So I'm hoping that that's actually part now of the... Um, of the civilization screen. So let's just go and, uh, and cue that one up. So there's the hyperwave radio. So we want this one to appear in this 50% research bonus area at some stage. So we'll just go and uh, click on done. So that one's now gonna be coming. Uh, I wanna be playing more of a economic sort of style game, I guess, to, to, a, to a degree uh, than what we did last time. Um, all right, all right, all right. So we'll end our turn there. And this one has got a poor class three world uh, and also a uh, amazing world in here, which is a mountainous world. It's got a tecopod hive. So that's a good one as well, actually. So yeah, we do want to be grabbing these systems as much as we possibly can. Now this is, uh, this is Albali Al 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 three, which is one, two, is that three there? No, it's four. Three must be this Promethean back over there as well. So it must be in here somewhere. Um, there it is. Okay, we've now got colonial policies. So unlocks the civilization screen, allows us to assign policies. So we've got these, we'll assign new tech or choose new tech. Uh, arm shuttles, yeah, again, we don't really have... Now, Xeno Industrialization improves the manufacturing districts. This one does lead to space elevators, and, and we can upgrade manufacturing with this one. The armed shuttles are going to give us uh, different sorts of ships, again, which will make our planets happier by being able to just put a, uh, a defensive area on them. That would be actually fairly cool. Uh, this one as well, the um, to produce the Starbase modules. Get the Starbase range of plus one, the modules of plus two. Take a pod mining unit. Now, I think, I don't know if we're going to be needing to get that one. We'll see how we go. I'm sort of, like, it is recommended by the research advisor. And then the um, the military advisor recommends that we research the, the warships. I think I might grab these, actually. Let's do them right now. I do want the hyperwave radio. I'm just waiting for it to show up in here some at some at some stage one thing we can do to try to make sure that this one does come up fairly soon is to have a quick look at the tech navigator and just see when if we get armed shuttles we then open up all of these so it may not be best to do that 
Uh, for governance, we do need to get the hyperwave radio, then all of these open up. Colonization, we've already got the colonial practices. We've only got the two there. But then if we go with xeno-industrialization, we only get one more. We don't actually open up any more choices. So I'm trying to limit the choices so that we end up getting what we want. So that it may be better to go that way at this stage. And then engineering, we've got the um, starbase. Uh, we've got the, what else do we have? Not much else, actually. So that's okay. We'll just go back in. Just go back. And starbase modules, you know, industrialization. I think I'll still go this way, actually. It's um, And then just hope that we end up picking this one up fairly soon. All right. Okay, so we've now got an empty slot. Now, this is our civilization. Did they? No, they didn't actually add that, unfortunately. So we can't see our civilization in here. I really wish they had of, um, just to get this, the summary of who we actually are. Um, I hope that they've put that in in 1.9 or certainly before release because it, it does need it somewhere in the game. Uh, we now actually have access to the civilization screen as such. So we're going to then be going through and trying to maximize. We've got one slot available back in through here. This is the civilization outputs. So we have things like brainstorming, for example. Uh, I'll just pause these and have a read through rather than explain every single one of them. We've got a couple of interesting ones. Three of these are stock standard, coerced colonization, heart of the empire, which has sort of been my go-to. Uh, just on the home world, you do actually then do get um, influence growth and gross inco income, but we're, the income is actually okay. Land exploitation as well does raise the pollution. So these in through here raises the, or lowers the approval, but you do get extra growth. But the new ones we've got is brainstorming because we're an inspired, uh, this is one of the traits that we actually have. So we're an inspired species. To that end, we can seek out the best and brightest of our people. So we get basically research of plus two applied to our home world, which I th I'm really actually thinking that's a good one. Uh, professionalism as well. We get an experience bonus of plus 50% because we all, another one of our cultural traits is that we're loyal. So inspired and loyal are both giving us these. Let's just put brainstorming in here and that will do us for now. So that will be okay, done. Um, now, this one here, we want to now move off. I do want to grab this this location. Let's just go back down over this way. And uh, we'll see what else we can spot. Now, there's this one in here. I'm going to go to this one. Actually, that's, oh, hang on, that's the wrong one. That's only, that's LB, LB3. Sorry, that's two. We want three, which must be on the same, it must be over here somewhere. Bring this one up and if we settle in here it means we don't have to settle this one uh, which i still would want to do this is a class 20 it does have harmony crystals and things like this but i think we want to get over here as well i think it might be time to buy out the uh, the next of the um of these the colony ship is coming very very soon so let's go and um, I still need to build even more of these. So let's just go and throw another one back in the, in the mix. This one here, we can actually uh, rush for, um, for 125. Yep, let's just do it. Done. So um, that will then come next turn. Okay, so we need to get one of our other citizens. Now, these aren't going to really worry them too much. They've got intelligence, social... I'll just go with the fairly generic one, I think. Uh, I'll go that one. A bit lower than the others. I'll just get them done. All right. Now, we have armed shuttles as well. And uh, what we want to do here is, is essentially we've got two of them that are in this location. So there's, uh, there's two stacked ships in through here. They're both, um, they're both pickets, I think. Picket M01 and... Actually, that's not it. Oh, there we go. Different one as well. This is the um, this one here. We've got the Sentinel as well. So the Sentinel M01. So this one here moves at seven. The other one moves at seven as well. So they both move at seven. Two, one, three. I'm just looking at the, at the numbers that they've got. They're pretty much the same sort of ship, really. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, going to add this one to the um, to Aurora Prime. Now, if we have a bit of a look at Aurora Prime and um, and just hover, sort of hover over it there. We can see the approval is where? Down there, 77%. Just press shift again. 
and we're not seeing the detail. Um, now we are. If we go to one of these, I wonder if we can sort of see taxes are too high. Okay, none of these are, your rushing production is difficult. Okay, it doesn't like doing that one. Um, so it's, it's gone down a little bit because of the rushing. Now, ultimately, it should also lose a bit of, bit of happiness because we don't actually have any protection. So I'm just gonna go and throw one of these around that particular world, just to give it some protection. And this one here, I'm going to move this one off as well to go and join up with the central one that we end up with over here. So we'll start to move that one up and away. New tech. So we still don't have the hyperwave radio, but we can get the space weapons now. Uh, industrial uh, Industrialization, I'm, I'm sort of happy to get that one. Artificial gravity. Increased movement speed by one. I might grab that. Although we are gonna be building a lot on these planets. So maybe we'll just go with the industrialization. And then we've got the next colony ship as well. So I do want to go across now and, and pick up this world over here. Just want to make sure I get reach these worlds before anyone else does. Now, yeah, where's my other ship? There it is. So I'm better off to go straight out just to just to expose more of the actual galaxy and then come down towards it. I should have done that up here. Right, in we go. Oh, not quite seeing it. Dead world there. We don't see very much around these, what, these ships. A bit dangerous for them. Definitely hope that no one else gets there before we do. There's not much we can do. Survey so ship, okay, cautiously approaches a mysterious object. This is the first of the surveys that we actually have done. And, um, whoops, something's happened there. I don't know what that is. Here we go. So Aurora Prime Planet Report. Um, so we've discovered the remnants of one of... I don't know what's happening in the background. <laughs> we've discovered the remnants of one of our first space vessels, uh, evidence of a time that we stepped nervously beyond Aurora Prime. What should we do with this piece of history? Put it in a museum so it may inspire future generations. So we get traditionalism, cultural awareness increases to three plus 5% research on all of our worlds, or there's no value in nostalgia, scrap it for parts. Nihilism is not who we're going to be playing. Put it back into service. So we end up with a free probe. I think that that's actually going to be the one that we would go for. Now, sorry about this, guys. I've um, my, my mouse seems to be wanting to go off in a different direction. I don't know what's going on here. I'll have to pause and then figure out what's going on. Fixed itself. I don't know what that was that did that, but anyway, something something went a bit sort of weird with all of this. Just move that one down slightly. Now we've got uh, this one is a class twenty two. We'd be wanting to get across there as well. Got Durantium back over there. This is actually a fairly nice little world. What else do they have in around here? We've got three planets. So we've got a class one poor, class 20 excellent, and a class 22 amazing. Okay, so we're definitely going to be wanting to go that way as well. So we'll just keep on sort of building up. And I think that, that once we get one of these planets, that will sort of do us for a little while. Then we'll just have to sort of build up. So we'll have all of these closed systems under our control. Ah, there we go. We found it. This is Salbadi 3. This is the amazing world, which will then boost out to where we can actually then go and get the extra the other world which is over in here somewhere so we're wanting to sort of make sure that we do come out this other side and then we've got the other sort of heading out off their own way 
Got another event. Your flagship comes across a drifting cargo container, seemingly, seemingly, seemingly abandoned and drifting in space. For years, the container is filled with valuable trade uh, goods. So what do we end up getting? Uh, plus 5% gross income on all your worlds for 50 turns. So it's not going to do much for what we actually have through here. Um, ship idle. Okay, so this is our new probe. I'm thinking I'm just going to tell it to go and... Um, I'll send it off this way to start with. Okay, we do actually have a lyrium there. That's good to know. Uh, and how far off? Yeah, we're a little way off the edge. So we'll just still get, get this one to go through the nebulas and then just see what else we can find in that edge in that edge area through there. You got Zeno Industrialization. Choose new tech. Still haven't got hyperwave radio. We can get the frigate class ships, which would be okay. Improves our senses, allowing us to detect subspace streams or research districts. I think we might just go this way. Um, if, although the actual uh, the uh, research advisor is recommending we get this one here, so, so we can see what's going on. Okay, let's do that, just so we can sort of see, see it. Just click on Done. Uh, back in through here. We then have, this will be our first colony. Class 24, Albati 3. Now, I don't know what we're going to call this one just yet. We'll, we'll rename it once we've got a theme for this world. Our first colony. With the establishment of this colony, we've taken our first steps into the galaxy. Our colonists represent everything which makes our people great. And with that, they'll have every chance of thriving on this new alien world. So there we are. We've now got this one. I love the um, the graphics. I said this in the last series that I did. I re they've improved so much. They really look beautiful. Like they've um, Stardock, as I say, have really, really... Uh, done a great job of this game. So a strange fungus on Al uh, Albali 3 has begun infecting our colonists with an illness which is which uh, that is immune to our medicine. Although our doctors can treat the symptoms easily enough, they have no hope of finding a cure and the risk of contagion is high. With this, with this disease afflicting us, our colony will never see its full growth potential. Some argue that we should cull the disease to protect the rest of the colony. Others, notably the disease, argue against this. What are your orders? So we've got don't cull anyone, even if even if we never find a cure, we won't become monsters. This is the individualism. So essentially, um, this is what we sort of have to choose thematically because individualism is one is is the choice that we went with. So we've sort of got it's uh, it's one of the uh, traits that we sort of did, did choose for ourselves. So uh, individualism cultural awareness increases to 28 plus one individualism trait discount and minus 50% tourism here. So I think we have to do that one. We'll just see what the other ones are. Quarantine the people who have been diseased and prevent them from reproducing. That's collectivism, which is the opposite of really what we're about. Uh, and then we have uh, Cullum. Our descendants uh, will thank us for having the courage to do this one. So this is totalitarianism. We'll just do individualism. So we'll just take that one on. By the way, YouTube, this is no reflection at all on a recent virus that hit the planet Earth. <laughs> It's not a, I'm pretty sure it's not a, um, any sort of social docu uh, social commentary on that. Anyway, let's just pick this one. Uh, so we've got Albati 3 has now sort of been claimed. Um, and we will then be able to uh, go in. Now, this one here is just a base colony. We do want to put a, um, we do want this to be colonized. How early do we want to do that? We can see here we should consider colonizing uh, Chavira 3 now. Chavira 3 is. Is this Chavira? Yeah, that's Chavira 3, which we do want to do. We want to get, get another colony ship for that one. We've got another colony ship now coming out because this one now will be able to reach all of the planets that are in here. So we'll just keep on sort of moving our way through and try to find where this extra world is that we haven't quite located just yet the lost world. Uh, now, this one in here, um, it says assign a leader to govern Albati 3. Yeah, so we want to actually have it as a core world, and we do want to have it as a core world. These will all be, become core worlds ultimately. We're sending resources back, but uh, we're sending a lot of wealth back actually. So we're going to do 11.01. .01. But I think we'll actually go and um, if we just uh, go to Albati 3, assign a governor. Now we do actually have uh, already. We've got. Um, we want fairly good social. We want a good combination: social resolve. This one has got uh, good resolve of eight. 
it's got a resolve of 12. I mean, if we're unsure, let's just go to the leaders, have a bit of a look and see what we've got. By the way, we looked at the factions last time, but we didn't actually talk about them. The Natural League is... Um, so we need leadership recruiting tech to actually sort of have a uh, somebody in in there, but we do actually have some presence with some of our some of our um, our guys actually in here. In fact, it looks like the endless Empor Empor emporium. The yeah, individualism goes up. The favour of individualism goes up. That's interesting. Collectivism goes into natural league, but we do actually have a member of these. This is the free mind centre, and then we have the um, favour back in through here. We'll probably end up going with the Endless Symporium is what we'll actually end up supporting, I would think. Uh, let's have a look and see who we can actually recruit and uh, and what they can then do. So we've got the diligence. Uh, high diligence is important for commanders and for governors of manufacturing-based worlds. And initially, that's what we do want. We want something reasonably high. Wow, this guy is good. This guy is good in all levels, actually. This is um, Sardinix uh, Vert Vertera. Uh, he is um, raised by squatters. The destitute factory, and he's cruel. So minus two social, plus two intimidation. the The skill mix that he has is really good. Maybe not for this world. I want this one here for uh, like a powerful commander. So I'm going to have I'm going to reserve this one for use on one of the ships. All of our commanders have got good resolve, so we could place. Oh, his social skills are terrible. Hmm, I'm thinking of grabbing this one. So Rhoda, Asden, these are fairly cheap for me, like because you know they cost me 50% less than a normal commander. So I can actually go and grab these governors relatively easy. A class 24 world is not the best. I'll be wanting to save this one for one of the 35 worlds. So let's just go and grab this one. We've then got the governor. Albardi 3, class 24. In you go. So we now actually have this one now sort of going to be looking after this particular world. And we've got avoided service. So avoided military service due to family connections. That's pretty poor. Um, let's just go back across. Just click on done. So Albardi 3 is now a core world. And we should be able to now come back in and start to sort of see things. We've got a lot of mountains, which is going to improve the influence. We've got plus 2 approval down through there. We've got plus 3 to wealth. Plus 3 to wealth there. That's interesting. Um, plus one to military back in the through that other side research wealth wealth god there's a lot of wealth in in here um, there's no housing one so we've only got three population so we're not going to be able to improve that one plus one to manufacturing plus three to research in there as well this is the techapods these small uh, six limbed semi intelligent creatures are near perfect mimics can be trained to do simple tasks. They're often used to make take care of uh, menial tasks in the cramped confines of starships. So this one gives us a plus two level to, to manufacturing as well. But initially, we need to get the core world capital. And again, um, well, I've only got three that this one touches. I've only got three if that one, if that one gets placed there. If I go there, I can then boost the um, I can boost the wealth generation here a lot so we're getting plus 13 now Ooh, if I go there plus two to approval I've got there's no great location for this I'm pretty sure if I move this one across what do we end up with here we end up with um, we don't do it we don't generate any wealth at all ourselves I think I'm just going to go and place it in here. Actually, what does that one do? This is uh, plus one to military. Yeah, it's, it's just got deep natural caverns. So let's just go and place this one in here. We've got a plus three, plus three to wealth, gold fields. Let's make this into a financial district. And um, then we do want to actually ultimately get a, uh, we've got the colonial generator there. This one gives us manufacturing a plus two. That should give us an extra one there, so that'll make it three. Let's go and place that one there. But we'd, I might even move that one around, and then we'll sort of slowly get this one, other one over here. I want, again, I don't want to be rushing this particular world. And then we've got the one colony, the one group that we had brought across before, the citizens that were that were here before, with you know sort of pretty average skills all the way through. 
Uh, these are plagued. So if we just press shift, what is that one going to do? Not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how we go, but these at least have got the uh, the plague from this particular world. Uh, there we go. Actually, we've got the plus four there with the population cap. Our oh, population cap plus one per level. That's okay. Actually, that's new. That was not there before. Anyway, that's fine. So we've got up to four that we can actually have in through here. Done. So we don't need to do anything else there. So this is Albardi uh, three. I do want to have ultimately the uh, small picket ships and things will end up probably coming to this this world in here this will be the main world that we're sort of interested in here we've got no more movement there so now we have to find the next the next location and what's going on here we've got one ship that's that can't do anything great we're now seeing two of these illyrium that's just, we definitely want to get this one we're coming fifth of, of five uh, yeah fifth of five <laughs> Innovators, so we're, not, we're doing the least amount of research. Hey, what do we care? Oh, wow, there's heaps. Okay, we definitely want to get a star base in through here. This will be awesome for uh, Illyrium. Is um, is you can see there the massive amounts of energy needed for advanced beam weapons. So we can use beam and beam weapons. I really, really like in this game. So just as a as a sort of middle of the road type uh, type weapon, I like the missiles as well, uh, but. Beam weapons. We're going to be able to do a lot in here. With, ultimately, with the uh, with getting getting a star base. So we'll maybe sort of work our way towards picking this up fairly soon. Um, now back in through here. This is Aurora Prime has finished its build queue. Um, one thing I'm not sure about is, is if it keeps any leftovers uh, in terms of production. The capital mainframe there. Yeah, we can increase this one. It's 20 turns, that's a bit too much. Got wealth, influence. Food overall is um, the planetary output is fairly good. We've only got five food though, and as we get more population and we want to get like three more turns, we get the next citizen. We get our food will improve a lot. We do actually have other locations, but this is a bit of a no-brainer. It will ultimately be an agricultural district. So I'm going to grab that one as a um, like just to get the extra boost of food. Let's just go and do that. It's only 12 turns for that one. This one here, I'm going to make this one into a manufacturing district, even though we do actually have a bit of a boost for other things in through there. Uh, this one here is plus three to military, so I think we'll still just keep on getting more manufacturing districts around these locations, and then eventually um, manufacturing back, probably back in here as well. Actually, what do we end up here? This is Thulium. We'll get the Thulium extractor in eight. Okay, let's move that one up a little bit. Maybe even before we get the food. We don't need the food urgently. Uh, then we've got the wormhole generator. I'll just place those there, just so we don't have to keep on coming back to the planet. Now, did we find anything here? We do have a class world, uh, uh, like a class two world. Uh, not very good. In, in this case, now we're just gonna set these to auto uh, explore. We'll just go and um, and locate. Uh, look, just have a look through everything. I could micromanage that. I think I'll just do the same in here as well. There's a black hole, so we may find uh, antimatter around this. But this is a good find in here. Of ships. Now I still got three. Now that one is the actually that is it. Hang on, is that the one? Have we just come across that one? The thirty. Um, that's uh, number six. There it is. Okay, so we've got a. Um, we do actually have another class twenty in there as well. But this is the um, this is the class thirty five amazing world, and so this is the one that we want to sort of center everything around. So hopefully this will actually be a good one. 
Pingo uh, the fourth. Now we don't know what these are going to specialize in just yet. We'll see what we end up getting. So Pingo uh, uh, six, sorry, is populated by a species of gigantic subterranean insects that are, no are normally docile. Our scientists have identified that the walls of their nests are lined with harmony crystals, which we could potentially um, excavate. This will not please the scorpions. What are your orders? And so in this case, we would sort of like based on on. Um, we, you know, we, we don't shy away from combat. That's sort of one of the traits that we actually have for our faction. So I'm thinking in this case, we would actually, yeah, so giant scorpions are more useful than crystals, treat them well. Now we do get the plus, this is egalitarianism. This doesn't really matter to us. We do get individualism trait discount. We get 20% resistance on the, on the world. Collect the limited crystals so we can without disturbing the scorpions. Again, this one gets the egalitarian trait discount, which I don't really need at this stage. Um, and we get plus three harmony crystals. Or crush the insects, take the valuables. This is totalitarianism. Now, I'm now thinking that based on egalitarianism, individualism, they're sort of, they are fairly sort of closely aligned to a degree anyway. Oh boy. Um, this one here we get plus 20 harmony crystals. I don't know if it'll tell us what they actually do. I forget what the, what the harmony crystals actually get up to. We do have less growth though with that one there. So I'm thinking that this one here, egalitarianism versus... We get the egalitarianism trade discount. I'm thinking I would tend to go more this way. I would have tended to go this way completely, but um, I can see that one because this one's now throwing me with that, with that individualism trait discount because that is what we sort of are heading towards. This will do. Um, this will do. Let's just go that way. Subspace scanning. So a systematic approach is needed when scanning, uh, but the, pra the practice is consider considerably harder in subspace where basic notions of distance and rotation aren't of much use. A new form of math is required. And so we've got the, uh, this one does open up a lot of different sorts of things. So we'll just choose new tech. And we've got research districts. I'm still not getting my hyperwave radio, which I really want. Uh, it's only two turns to get it if I do want it. Uh, space weapons I won't worry about. We've got the subspace streaming. So this allows travel across subspace streams. I don't need it yet. Look, I might actually grab hyperwave radio now. Just because I do want my, um, my uh, command ships built fairly fast and that does unlock them. Uh, just to put that into perspective, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the commanders in through here. These ships, you can see down the very bottom of the uh, of the tooltip, it's showing hypervoid radio tech required before we can get one of these ships. And we do have some good commanders with very high commander skills, like we've got 12 in through here. So we we're wanting al Dowd to actually end up in command of one of the ships. And we'll figure that one out when we actually get this particular tech. Let's just click on done. But I've been waiting for the hyperwave radio for ever, for, since the basic, basically the start of the game. So we ended up getting this first step towards that in the um, in the first episode, we set that one up. In fact, the very start of this episode, we, we ended up getting the um, the communications that was required for that one. So we're going to be wanting to get this one as well. This is a class 20. Now, this is a fair distance away. So eventually, we'll end up sort of gobbling up all of this. But I, I want to make sure I grab this one as well. So we'll just keep on sort of moving our way across. I haven't come across any pirates yet, which is good. Um, we're just going to keep on expanding. That's really what all we can really, all really, we can really do here. We may have to change our growth. How are we going in here? We've got a colony ship coming in one. I'm just going to go and build a yet another colony ship. And Aurora Prime, how are we going there with the uh, the citizens? We've only got really got one citizen we can use properly for these sorts of things coming in two turns. I could always send a scientist off, I guess, if I had to. But uh, we've got two more two more turns, and we get then get this next citizen, which means this one will then go. Then we'll have another one for the next ship as well. So we are sort of sending everyone out. Now, th this is also chomping away at our ability to build effectively. We do want to be you know, getting these worlds up and running. So we should now consider colonizing Chavira 3, yes. We should assign a leader to govern Mapingo 6 and a ship with up uh, has upgrades available. Actually, we should do that one as well. So this one does actually have upgrades. Uh, crew quarters, command bridge, or communications terminal. 
It's the senses, that's the moves or the or the hit points. We'll go hit points. Just make it a bit more powerful. It will eventually be a very, very powerful ship, this one. We have an event. So your flagship captain reports encountering a lost cargo container floating in space. After careful examination, it appears to be a device made by a long lost civilization to find precursor technology on planets. The device is very old and in poor shape, but it could still be valuable even if it's only used once. Do you wish to, to uh, store this, the device in your vault or sell it for credits? Now, our credits are low and we can get 400 treasury or this device will increase the base tech rating of a target planet. That's, that's forever, <laughs> so I'm going to do that. And I don't know where I want to do this one just yet. Uh, one thing I do want to do is I want to go and make sure that Mapingo 6 is assigned a, um, a commander, like a governor. And so this one here, actually I'll just do it through the other screen. So our recruitment, this is the one that I wanted to get, the high diligence, high social, high intelligence. The trouble is he's, a, he's cruel. So we'll still get him. So we'll bring him across. Now we're down to small amounts of money now. We can't afford this one anymore. Let's just go back across to the governors. And so Mapingo 6. That's the one, isn't it? Yep, so 10, 6, 9. I'm just thinking that this planet is likely to be a good one for us. Done, done and dusted. So Mapingo is now a core world as well. Um, and uh, let's have a look and see what we've got. So we have, I think it would be nice actually, would be to have like a summary of the different sorts of benefit. Well, I guess you do. Planetary input, you've got like uh, five mi mineral input, uh, three technology, so mainly wealth, a bit of food in here as well. So you can sort of see through here, we're getting plus one to food. Um, I don't know if it actually equates one, two, three, four, five. It's got six. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Then these are influence. Influence is high with the mountains. Yes, yeah, so I guess it does give you a bit of a feel for what's going to be happening in through here. Income is five in through here. So our income is actually now fairly, fairly good. The only place we can actually put where we can get the extra growth is here, but we then lose a lot of other things. We do have plus one manufacturing, plus one manufacturing the forest and the volcanic rifts. Plus one to food. I, I do need to have a research world. This one's not ideal. But these could all be made into research areas. Plus one to influence there in the mountains. I mean, if I place it there, I can then still get manufacturing in the forest. And, uh, and then get these for research and then even push out even further into the wetlands for research as well. I think I'll do that, you know. I think we'll actually sort of just place it in here nice and centrally. So we've got that one already established. Then we've got the, um, the colonial generator, which is the manufacturing. So we go that way into there, which are giving me a, a two boost. And then we actually have the uh, supply depot, which will then be a three boost there, two boost there. Actually, what does the supply depot do? It's um, it's got an adjacency level bonus of plus two to um, for manufacturing and military, but it doesn't give me a, any actual numbers. Whereas if I go and click in here and create a, a manufacturing district, that's also any percentages. Hmm. Yeah, this is plus ten percent. And then, um, you yeah, the bonus per level approval. It's not going to really hit matter that much, to be honest. Look, I might just grab it in there. And then we can sort of just go and get a, um, a manufacturing district back up and through that side. And then we can go back and do the research back over this other side as well. So I can't get these other things just yet, but we'll just get our production working. So that will be fine. And there's no rush with this one. Um, now, looking at the time, I probably should start to sort of uh, uh, finish up at this point in time. Uh, you have enough culture points to add a new trait to your civilization. I might do that in the next episode. 
new leaders available to us and survey. Uh, we've got uh, Friendly Planet Tech Finder. So you, you, yeah, so we've actually got that one through there. I still haven't got a world that I really want to have as a tech world yet. Um, these aren't really sort of, these aren't exceptional in that capacity. We do want to grab this world. We want to grab this world. These are both class 20s. And we've also then got the other world over here, which we want to get fairly soon as well, which is a 22 and nothing over there. So we've got a 22 and a um, and a 20 there as well. So we've got a, still got a lot of planets that we need to be gobbling up in this particular game. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to catch you in the next episode. And it may be that we end up with 1.9. So I may just do a bit of a summary as to what 1.9 brings, uh, hopefully in the next episode. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you then.